Hey everyone, uh, Roy here with the Rugged Badger uh, race team. Uh, we race in Champ Car as Team Parts Badger. So we have the Miata here, uh, getting it ready for winter. I'm about to clean up the splitter, and I thought it'd be a good time to kind of go over what we do with our front arrow, the splitter. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about that, uh, so I just kind of wanted to put this video together as we clean this up and, and sort of get it ready uh, for next season, and, and hopefully I don't have to build another one. So uh, here's the uh, front air dam splitter combo. Uh, we changed this up from the normal flat style and we added multiple dimensions. We got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so over on this side, uh, that's the intake side. Um, so that's the first arrow element I wanna talk about. Uh, so you can see we actually trimmed out, uh, there's normally a lot of extra flange there. Uh, we cut all that out. Because uh, we wanted to make that as smooth and as big as possible. Um, and that feature goes into the air box here. Which you can see the same thing here. We, we cut this all out. It's all mangled because of uh, various contacts. This car has been a race car for a very long time. Uh, but we cut out, uh, I think there were some pieces here. We wanted to make this flat and streamlined so all the air could go into the air box. Um, which you can see the air box here. Uh, we sealed it uh, with tape, sealed all the way around, uh, and we do generate uh, positive pressure inside of this box. Got a little hole here that we run um, a probe through, so we're able to get various pressures inside of the air box. And then this goes through a short 90, which then would go to uh, the intake manifold, which we're swapping that out right now. So that's the, the first element is getting that charged intake. Now, a couple things that we've tried on this intake, um, we've tried various flaps. Uh, so one of the things that we heard is that if you put a flap uh, kind of in the shape of my hand here, um, it can help channel the air and increase positive pressure, which it does. Uh, so we did, I think a large flap up top large flap on the side, small flap on the side, small flap on top, and then something big all the way around. Um, and we did see actual positive pressure differentials in the air box, um, but it was fractions uh, of a PSI, uh, so small that um, there wasn't any horsepower difference. Uh, I figured the drag generated from those added elements probably uh, outweighed the actual aero performance. Uh, so we took those off and we're just kind of leaving it as is. Now, when this is mated up, we, we tape in here to create that smooth channel. So this is connected straight into that sealed air box. So the air, hopefully the air is directly hitting this. Uh, maybe it's, it's manipulated a bit with the air dam, but the air comes in, um, creates positive pressure in the intake. And I also wanted it higher up because uh, a bigger difference in the actual, uh, than the pressure generated is gonna be the temperature. And I wanted to get far up off of the track as I could as reasonable without seriously impacting the, the flow on the car. So um, that's why we chose that. It's also a really good location. Um, secondly, we have the brake ducts. Um, so we have these brake ducts on either side. Uh, we actually cut pretty small holes here. Um, it's actually just about the size of the duct. And then if you could see inside there, the actual flange is a bit bigger. Um, but we actually don't need a crazy amount of cooling and I want to keep that duct small um, just so I can keep the air on the air dam and, and not pushing through the ducting system. So I could talk about how that connects up. We have just the brake duct here that gets taped up once the air dam's installed. That comes around here and we have these custom uh, ducts that we made. Now, we did have an off-the-shelf duct that we purchased called the, the Singulair duct. The problem with that is, rather than pointing down here near the hub where the rotor center uh, comes here, the air is supposed to come out of the rotor, um, it actually is pointed on the outside face of the rotor. And it cracked, I think we got five laps in, uh, before it cracked with the Singulair duct. Um, another thing we had to add is the shrouding. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit, but that really just protects the out the inside rotor face from overcooling. So we actually had to shroud it 
to reduce the airflow contacting directly on the face and all the cooling should be coming from the inside of the rotor. That's really important, uh, especially running the cheaper wheel woods that we need to run uh, under the 2X rule set from 2020. Under the 2021 rule set, we'll probably move to a, a more expensive rotor uh, that won't be as finicky, so to speak. It should be a little bit higher quality. And then while I'm here, you notice everything is paint marked uh, for uh, bolt location. So let's talk about the next feature, which is going to be the radiator ducting, which I have this here. So radiator ducting is free prior to the radiator, so we created this nice duct. We made that separate from the air dam and the splitter because when the air dam splitter has an issue, I don't want to rebuild this as well because <laughs> this is a, a pain in the butt to build, uh, especially with this core support still in place. We, we don't really want to cut that out because it's pretty light and it connects the two frame rails. So I, structurally, I kind of wanted to keep that, um, but it, it creates some challenges here. So for the duct opening, using some metrics uh, from old actual World War II aerodynamics, um, because they they went through this, uh, um, all the science behind it, so to speak, and, and did the testing, and they found that the opening should be about one third the size of the actual radiator. So that's what we did here. So this is about one-third the size of the radiator. Uh, we don't run a thermostat, so in colder climates, we actually run tape in front of our uh, air dam to reduce the amount of flow going through the radiator. Um, but you can see that that channel's up here, and I have that taped all around the radiator, which is a stock radiator. And we have some custom mounting. You can see that it's taped all the way down the bottom. And then... Uh, so that ducting is is completely sealed. Um, so that's the ducting, which you can see on the back side here. So we just have that rectangular opening, and we tape into that ducting. Um, now we do use a grate. Now the grates themselves actually uh, restrict a lot more airflow than you think they would. Um, not only is there a drag because all these little uh, elements are round, it creates a lot of drag. Um, but it, it consumes a, a surprising percentage of area. I think this is like 12% blockage or something like that, which you, you wouldn't think it when you looked at it, but that's, that's actually the case. Unfortunately, there's not a better option. Um, one of the issues that we had, however, I mean, we don't want debris going into the radiator, so we need something, but on at least two occasions, um, where you go off course, we picked up some dry grass uh, that blocked this entire screen. Another instance, it was actually snow that blocked the screen, and we had to come in for a pit stop. And within just one lap, taking it easy to come in, uh, we almost overheated by the time we got in. Um, so what I think I'm going to do for this season is I'm going to create a Z pattern. And what I want to do with that Z pattern is allow it to, to fill the valley with any debris, but still leave the peaks of the Z, so to speak, uh, open for airflow. So worst case, we're still going to have some airflow. Um, so I'm going to try creating something like that pattern and, and just see if it works. Um, so that's the radiator element. So we talked about the intake, uh, the brake ducting, uh, the radiator. Um, now probably talk about our splitter ramps. So similar to the diffuser in the back of the car, you can actually do something similar on the front. Um, and you see this ramp here. It's quite a large opening, and it comes down and, and ramps up. Which I'll, I'll split this up. You can notice it actually starts right here. You, you want to start them a little bit further back from the lip. You don't want them right on the edge. Flip this upright. You can see the back side of this opening. So what this does, the air that comes in here comes into this section and it forces an expansion to take place into this region. And when that expansion takes place, uh, it actually sucks air in and creates a low pressure region right here. And you're also, you're starting to actually slow that air down as you expand it, which this region is about to contact the tire face. So we wanna slow that air down and then this air is forced behind the tire. So the air actually comes up. 
see if I get a shot here. Um, so the, the section hitting the tires here, the other section is actually underneath this brake duct. And hopefully it finds a way around all this crap back here and forces itself out the back side of the wheel well. Um, alternatively, uh, we have the, the flares up here, the, the vents, louvures up here. And we kind of copied the design for that. But what that's going to do is evacuate the high pressure zone that ex exists there um, from the tire rotation and also the buildup of pressure in this area. We want to evacuate as much of that as we can. So that's what we did. Um, so you see the ramp here. Uh, this one's probably a pretty aggressive ramp as far as angle. Um, you don't necessarily have to go that steep. Uh, but these can generate a, a pretty significant amount of downforce and we have them on either side here and this is roughly copying a shape uh, from some off-the-shelf ones that you can buy but uh, we don't want to get charged points so this section right here we're not charged points for and then on the back side that's actually cut up bumper pieces um, so we're actually to get full zero points um, on the ramps themselves by repurposing material. Um, and we do similar things on the rest of our flat floor. So as far as mounting, um, we have a few different mounting features. So we just put some studs up through. You'll see those here. So two studs on either side, and really that's just a safety measure. And we got some of the thinnest steel that we could find that's still rigid. Um, and then this holds the, the front section. Heaven forbid something were to happen forward of this, this can at least keep the main structure supported. The front's going to be contacting the ground, but at least the whole thing isn't going to rip off. Um, that's why that's there. We wanted to keep it as lightweight as possible. We also have uh, some multi-point brackets we put up here. This is for some spars that actually go through uh, the front and mount to these little pieces here. So these pieces go up, the spar goes up through here, and then mounts to the actual chassis. Um, now on the outside, we had cable pieces mounted on the outside here, um, which we did need. When we added um, these elements, not only did it uh, reduce the rigidity of the entire structure, uh, but it also added a lot more downforce, which which pulls these down because that low pressure region is right here. Um, so we do need some kind of support. We're going to add uh, semi-rigid spars. Uh, Professional Awesome sells them, so we're going to be adding those. Hopefully those work out well. Um, now some other elements. We could talk about what's happening over here. So you'll notice we, we have this gurney flap that extends up. Uh, we were doing some testing with this gurney flap, and what we want to do is force the air... Uh, around the tire so the air comes up to the air dam the gurney flap actually kicks that out a little bit further and I think artificially that increases our, our frontal area which isn't good but if it avoids contact with the tire I'm hoping what that can do is accelerate the air underneath because it allows uh, more air to exit on the back side of the tire um, I don't know if that's the case uh, we tested them we didn't see a substantial difference of actual time and you can also notice the end plate here. Um, and what we want to do is, is create it so that when the car's going forward through the air down the straightaway, that the air can still pass through this channel. And once we hit yaw and the air starts traveling more at an angle, um, that the air effectively gets trapped between this end plate and right here. And it increases uh, the amount of air on the front and hopefully accelerates the air underneath uh, creating uh, lower pressure. And lastly, we have the, the front lip here, which we lowered quite a bit. We were having issues earlier in the season uh, with losing some of our rear downforce and yaw through the entire flat floor. And what we, what we were thinking is that uh, the front was actually uh, too low and we weren't able to keep consistent air underneath the car in addition to that, some of the, the wake that was created from the front tire um, eventually bursted, so to speak, the uh, low pressure regions that were being generated in the diffuser in the rear of the car. 
and we would get snap over steer. So we added this front lip. I'm probably actually gonna make that a little bit bigger um, just so we have a little bit more stability and the arrow is less finicky. Um, and over with, with this vent here, we actually just tape that off. Uh, so that's not needed. So uh, additional mounting, uh, you can see these two holes on the back. Those get mounted uh, to the actual subframe itself. Um, and then that goes to the flat floor. So that is our front arrow and our front splitter. Thanks everyone.